Okay, so this is a sample of the painting that you're going to be creating. And I want you to look at it and I want you to notice some things about the painting. First of all, it's divided into four separate areas and there are four different color schemes. But each of these squares has a similar or really the same set of shapes and designs. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the designs in a minute. But first, I'm going to talk about the color scheme because you're going to be doing this in your painting. The upper left hand corner has what is called an analogous color scheme. So if you remember way back in the beginning of the third quarter, we did a little exercise with analogous color three colors that sit next to each other on the color wheel. So in this sample, they, uh, you know, this artist has used, uh, it looks like yellow, orange, and maybe a red, orange. Analogous color scheme. Look at that up. Remember what analogous is. It's gonna be one of the vocabulary words that you're gonna review. Then if you look at the upper right hand corner, that is a monochromatic color scheme. So if you remember monochromatic, mono meaning one, chromatic meaning color, or chroma meaning color. Mono meaning one, chroma means color. So it's a monochromatic color scheme. And in this sample, the artist has used red. So tints and shades of one color. Okay, so when you look at the bottom left, you can see there are shades of green and looks like reds in there, all variations on those two colors, red and green. Tints of red, shades of red, tints of green, shades of green all in that lower left hand square. And that, if you remember, is complementary color. Red and green. Then in the last one, the bottom right hand corner, you are going to do another complementary color scheme. So you can choose another set of complementary colors. In this sample, the artist has used orange and blue, okay? So that is the color schemes that you are going to be creating in your painting. Now let's talk about the design. You don't have to copy this design, but you should be thinking about something that is either organic or geometric or combination of both. Yours does not have to be as complicated as this. Yours could simply be a couple of overlapping circles or it could be all stripes. So here's some samples for you to look at. You can also look online for reference. You know, anything that is organic or geometric is going to work fine. Okay, I'm giving you a 12 by 12 inch piece of paper, okay? Please be careful not to wrinkle it up. I'm also giving you a six by six inch piece of paper. And I'm gonna be giving you a six by six inch piece of carbon paper, okay? So this is, tr this is a really nice material to trace things, okay? There's two kinds. You might be getting one that looks like this, or you're getting one that looks like this. Now these have two sides, and you have to use it properly or it's not going to trace for you, all right? So this one is a little harder to see, but this is kind of shiny on the downside, okay? and dull on the upside. So I wanna make sure I have it right because part of this project is you're going to be tracing something. You're going to be creating a drawing on this piece of paper. 
okay? So part of this project is color, mixing color, but the other part is using balance in your composition. So I'm gonna show you the type of design. I want you to make one here, and then you're going to be tracing it by placing the carbon paper in the proper way, face down, shiny side down, whether you're using this kind or this kind, okay? And then you're going to be putting your drawing, this doesn't have anything on it yet, but this will have a drawing on it, and then you're going to be tracing over it. Okay, so I have my piece of tracing paper, and remember, yours might be like this, or it might look like this, okay? And this can be used over and over again. This is the shiny part that goes down. So shiny side down, the dull side up. All right, so no matter which one you get, you're going to make sure that shinier side is face down. So this piece of paper is, let me just zoom out a little bit, 12 by 12, okay? This is six by six inches. And the piece of paper I've given you to do your drawing is also six by six inches. And you have to think about what you're doing here. I'm going to begin by putting my six by six inch square in the upper left hand corner. And I'm going to place my drawing on top. Okay, so I have my palette, I have some paper towels, I have some water, and I'm gonna do a monochromatic color scheme. So I kinda of think I'm gonna do what they did in that sample. I'm gonna use the blue. I'm gonna open up my blue, and then I'm gonna squeeze some out on here. And it's monochromatic, which means it's all one color. Mono meaning one, okay? If you need more paint, let me know, okay? I can give you more paint. Um, mono meaning one, chroma meaning color, one color. So the way we get variation in this monochromatic painting is we're gonna create tints and shades of blue. You could do tints and shades of red, you could do yellow, you could do green, you could do um, purple if you wish. All right, I'm just doing blue because I like it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a couple of these areas in just blue, which is gonna be blue. And again, all of the things that we talked about in the way of painting technique still apply in this painting. So I'm gonna take my time and try and do this as neatly as possible, okay? So all of the shapes in this section, in this upper left-hand corner, are going to be painted in the one color scheme, monochromatic, okay? So this is really the fun part. All right, so I'm gonna say, just for the heck of it, I'm gonna do, a, um, a tint, all right? So you can do various tints. You can do darker ones, you can do lighter ones. And as I go along, this thing is gonna develop into a very interesting abstract painting. All right, so since I have some of this color mixed up, I think I'll do this block it's a little bit lighter. Try to keep all the shapes consistent 
with the color. Like this is a, trying to get this all to be one tint of blue. And this paint is covering up my dark lines pretty well. Okay, so you're gonna pick an analogous color scheme. Now the colors you have, you have the black and the white. Okay, they're not gonna help us right now. And then we have these four colors. And let's say for instance, I wanna do red violet, I wanna do red, and I wanna do red orange. All right, so I have the red, so I'm good there. But how do I go about making the other ones? Gonna have to mix them. So if I wanna make a red violet, I'm gonna to have to first of all make violet or purple, and I mix these two together. Now I want a red violet. So what do I need to do to make it a red violet instead of just the regular violet? I need to add more red, okay? So for your analogous section for the color scheme, you're gonna to have to mix color, all right? So you're gonna to have to think about this. This is not a no brainer. This is something I gotta put some thought into. So I got my red violet mixed up. I have my red right out of the tube. And now I have red orange. How, what am I gonna do for that? Well, I'm gonna have to get my yellow and I'm gonna have to mix up an orange. But since this is red orange, it's gonna have more red than yellow, okay? So first pick your color scheme, figure out how you are going to mix these colors, okay? All right, so I am doing orange and red orange. So I'm gonna use my yellow and I'm gonna use my red. And mixing these up. Add a little more yellow. And I do have more paint if you need more paint. Okay, so that's gonna be one part of this analogous color scheme. Now the next one is gonna be red orange. So I want it to be more red than yellow in there. Do a little bit, all right. So that's yellow orange, and that's going to be the red orange, and then red. So I'm gonna go much more yellow because I'm not gonna be able to tell the difference here. And again, this has to do with the colors that you have, the paint that you have. Not all paint is the same, and these are not the greatest hues in the world. So we're gonna say this one is our orange right here. This is gonna be the red orange. This will be the red, okay? You might choose not to do anything in this orange and red you know, color family because the, the red is so close to orange anyway. You might wanna stick to like a green, blue, green, and a blue. All right, but we're gonna see if we can make this work. I'm gonna get started painting that area. You also can use tints and shades. So if you want some more variation of color, then add some white, add a little teeny bit of black. All right.
Okay, so what I'm gonna do now are the two complementary color schemes. And I think over here, I'm going to do orange and blue, all right? Because they're complementary. And then over here, I'm going to do um, purple and yellow, because they're complementary. And remember, complementary colors sit opposite each other on the color wheel. So when I look at the color wheel and I look at this little one right here, I can see there is yellow and there is purple or violet. They're right across from each other. Put that one over here. And then I'm going to do orange and blue because it's like my favorite. So orange and blue. All right, and remember, just like I did with monochromatic and I did with analogous, you can add tints and shades to these colors. So you have a bunch of colors that you can use. 